Welcome to the Light Cellar Podcast, brought to you by Light Cellar, a place where you can learn to find and craft your own food and medicine. In this interview series, you will meet a range of characters in the health and wellness space that are bringing light to your everyday. You'll hear from a number of different experts on a wide variety of topics. We have several different series within the podcast, including our Wild Wisdom and Storytelling with Blaine Andrusik, the Rays of Light and inspiring wellness in the community, plus solo cast, Q&As, and other topics for you to enjoy. You can find this as a video version, as well as the audio on any of your favorite platforms. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this with somebody you know who will benefit. You can also shop online at lightseller.ca. Hello, hello. Welcome to another edition of Herbal Highlights with Angela Buick. And Malcolm Saunders. If anybody's listening to this, they might think that I'm Malcolm Saunders <laughs> and you're Angela Buick. But hopefully, from, it's um, the context clues yeah. maybe might indicate yeah. otherwise. Cool. Well, uh, yeah. What's your herbal highlight for the week, Malcolm? Well, it's kind of a, 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 well, two, two herbal highlights that kind of led us to what we're going to talk about today. So one was the extreme cold that's coming in. Uh, it's yeah. something that we've been using. I mean, I use it every day. Uh, we put it on our son when he goes outside um, for the reasons we'll talk about. Mm-hmm. And then the second one was another kind of like, ah, I need something. And it results in a bit of pain I found myself in. <laughs> Malcolm, you don't hurt yourself very often, so this is a... I know, I don't. And uh, so, yeah, I got into snowboarding two years ago. Uh, this is our second, like, full year doing yeah. it. And, uh, yeah, I've been doing great. Like, I love it. Uh, it's a lot of fun. And uh, I've only ever fallen seriously once in, the, like, the early, early days. Yeah. When uh, I was like, oh, most dangerous part about this is when you're learning and you think you have it, you get overconfident. Okay, that's when I, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, had that first accident. And it was fine. Okay, tailbone, like crushed for a couple of weeks, bit of pain, that kind of thing. (laughs) On I go. Uh, But yesterday, I took the whole family out and my son, who's four, we had him on skis. He was doing amazing. Like he's literally been on skis four times. He was like getting frustrated if he wasn't going fast enough, you know, like we took him down the green runs, like he was on the chair left, like, oh, awesome. like the bunny hill is like, what is this? You yeah. know, like, <laughs> get me off of here. So an adrenaline junkie. Yeah. So he was doing amazing. And, uh, so I really had to kind of like slow down, you know, like, okay, now ski to me. And, you know, I go a little bit further and, you know, like, yeah. Uh, but yeah, just on like you know, almost the flattest of slopes, the slowest of speeds. I yep. just fell back and just like, yeah, something in my hip flexor area. Like, yeah. it's not feeling good. Um, so that's that's my other herbal highlight. It's like, what can I put on this thing to, yeah. Yeah, help relieve some of the pain. Yeah. I had a similar thing, but cross-country skiing. <laughs> I just did the splits. Like I was going down a hill and people were watching me and I'm not very super confident with my skills and usually I hurt myself when my muscles start to get tired but despite this the was leotard outfit that you go despite <laughs> my full onesie multicolored neon right. leotard yeah. it does not protect you from falling <laughs> but when I fell it was like Jim Carrey-esque you know physical comedy kind of fall yeah forward into the splits oh. I don't do the splits normally <laughs> so you did them that day. I did them that day <laughs> And uh, whew, same thing, actually, hip flexor, right. and a muscle that I I don't even I didn't even know existed. Right. But it uh, <laughs> I used um, this guy, our Arnica pain relief balm. Yeah. Which, which I helped make this one. Somebody mm-hmm. else started. I think it was might have been Blaine actually that started, or you. Yeah. That started with the, Arnica the Arnica leaf, leaf extraction. Yeah. So that was already extracted in oil. Then we took that, uh, added the beeswax and some yep. other magic to it. Yeah. And some essential oils. We tried to use peppermint because it's such a nice oil for injuries. It's cooling the injury. You want the inflammation. You don't want herbs to stop. Herbs don't stop inflammation, as we know. They uh, regulate the -hmm. body a little bit more. But peppermint's nice for that. It's got that analgesic or mm, anodyne, anodyne wanted quality yeah which by the way that that's our kind of herb word of the week mm-hmm. uh, that smells good at. we put rosemary in here too because mm-hmm. it's of antioxidant potential it's yeah. nice 
Cool. So that's great. Yes. But so, anodyne is our word of the week. Yes. And it just means helping pain, helping relieve pain. Mm -hmm. We don't want pain like, you know, it's nice when it's not debilitating. Right. Pain is a message from our body. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the definitions that you're reading about that, like linked directly to analgesic, which is mm -hmm. the word, uh, we're both familiar with, which is, you know, yeah, that kind of pain, relieving, pain numbing. I'm going to put this on my neck, actually. Yeah, there you go. Good if you get a headache. Yes. Arnica is a wonderful, wonderful herb for, you can try some if you like, mm -hmm. um, for any bruising or any muscular pain, we want to avoid using Arnica on open wounds. That's right. Yeah. That's so, I wouldn't use this if you had an open wound, we would do something different like comfrey or. Yeah. Yeah. And in even the caution with comfrey is, uh, if it is an open wound, make sure it's totally clean. Yes. Cause it can, it's like Wolverine style yeah. wound healing. <laughs> it's really, really powerful. Yeah. So, well, which leads us to our next kind of feature. Um, yeah. so that's the Arnica pain relief balm. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Come uh, in and I try haven't it. Lathered this one on yet, but I will. We actually had a customer come in yeah. just when we had put the Arnica pain balm out on the shelf and she had just closed her, uh, foot in the door of her oh. car and so her ankle bone was all oh. bruised immediately bruised and she right. came in and i was like put some of this on and she put it on and then she went and got an elixir and she came back to me and she's like it's already feeling better like the Amazing. the bruising is kind of regulating a little bit it's a very wonderful cool. product all right and then this next one which features comfrey and mm -hmm. a number of other uh you know green herbs grown in the garden chickweed yarrow can't even remember off the top of my head because it's few months ago. Free. That's not even on here. And they were actually made uh, primarily from fresh herbs. Yes. Garden grown. Yeah. Uh, extracted in in oil, and uh, the kind of a common theme amongst all the salves that we do mm -hmm. uh, is we primarily use olive oil. Yeah. Because um, olive oil is great. You get a nice, good quality. It's accessible. Uh, it satisfies or meets the needs of you know people that are more like plant based or vegetarian, vegan. Yeah. Uh, it's a liquid oil. It's fairly stable with heat, so you can apply a bit of heat. Some of these uh, compounds, you know, are going to be more pulled easily, especially when we talk about resins next. Mm -hmm. um, you know, tallow is wonderful. I'm all for tallow, mm -hmm. uh, and maybe at some point we'll get into extracting with tallow. But mm -hmm. so far, the herbal ones have been in olive oil mm -hmm. and then uh, we'll always add beeswax as well so the beeswax maybe i can jump to that before we get into we do about 17 percent ish depending on yeah and that that beeswax percentage is uh to kind of firm it up you yeah know, to make it like yeah so uh, you can do this have this sort of consistency and not if you're just listening it's more of a oil spilling in your pocket or your purse uh, yeah. leaking out of the jar um, yeah and it's honestly it's it's easier to apply and uh, beeswax has its own medicinal properties yep uh, i remember watching an ad years ago it's like uh it was like some sort of skin you know care like product mm -hmm. talking about like you know what the number one thing is to lock moisture into your skin it doesn't come from an animal and it doesn't come from a plant we're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what was it? It was beeswax. Oh, beeswax. Yeah. So, okay. I don't know. I do feel, though, because I have very, very dry skin, especially this time of year, which, is this what you use on your son? No. Oh. Uh, we're going to get to it. Yeah. I'm jumping ahead of the game <laughs> here. But I do find this to be almost like a little bit of a barrier cream totally. because it's... Oftentimes we'd use lanolin or, or right. you know, some brands that you would get at the pharmacy that are more thick and they absorb really well. So that's the one disadvantage that I hear people may, might say about these types, like more natural salves, is that they can be quite greasy. Right. But you really do not need a lot. And you can, like I always rub it on the backs of my hands just right. to like help protect because we wash our hands a lot here at the shop and it's just yeah. in life and this time of year. But um, I also find it very meditative when I'm like sitting down and I know, you know, and I just sit and just like rub in myself. Yeah. I love it. That's totally. So yeah, super protective. Plantain and calendula oh, are the other two okay, flowers right. in that green garden stuff. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's we great. did a lavender 
essential oil, but just a little just bit. Very mild. <clears throat> yeah, because yeah. some people don't want too much fragrance in there. No, for sure. Yeah, yeah. salves. So essential oils, if anything else is added. Another one we'll talk about didn't even have added essential oils. It was just from the herbs themselves. And, and you can kind of sense that kind of nice green gardeniness mm -hmm. in that salve amongst yep. the lavender. So that's a great one. Mm -hmm. um, you know, can be used any time of year. Like you mentioned, it is great for uh, winter. Although, you know, also great in the summer with your gardening. You get mm -hmm. washing your hands or you get the dirt and like the drying out and the cracking. Yep. Uh, really helpful mm -hmm. for healing the skin, smoothing it out, and then the beeswax is, is kind of protective as well. So yep. And this would be a good one to use for scars as well if you have right. any cuts that you need. Mm -hmm. um, to help heal up that yeah. would be a lovely so even though it isn't the exact one that we'll put on Aska we kind of have rotation mm -hmm. so uh, sometimes just like a tallow uh, bomb yep. itself but again it's the same principle the idea of like putting fat on the skin yep. uh, for winter this time of year especially like we'll go sledding or uh, we go biking yeah, windburn like wind right? Yeah. right yeah and yeah. Uh, you know the oil on the skin the beeswax on the skin creates this kind of protective layer yeah so. there's also a little bit of spf in things like tallow yeah very very small but yeah nice for that reflective snow totally in certain oils like uh, raspberry seed mm -hmm. oil carrot seed that kind yep. of thing they also have a, a slight bit of spf and I, I think the ultimate like you know I don't, even, I don't even buy sunscreen, so like it's like what are the SPF forty or four hundred? Like what's the I range? Have, yeah, I've been told that anything above twenty five is a. It, it's a. It's exaggerated. It's you know? exaggerated. It's just, yeah. it's just like your skin burns in five minutes. Now you have twenty. You can do twenty five times that before your skin burns. Right. But we all know we'll get into sunscreens yeah, in the yeah. summer. But yeah, <laughs> and skin care, right? Yeah. A lot of it, you know, being one of your largest organs, that's excreting things to the surface, mm -hmm. and then can have a chemical reaction even the lotions and such that you're putting on there mm -hmm. uh, can cause a lot of problems yeah uh, these are all reacting to the sun yeah and we've made wonderful things that you can you could eat it yeah if you <laughs> mistook it for something else yeah and you know beeswax <laughs> it doesn't react with the sun you know in nope. any negative way right? yep. it's one could argue it's a product this of the is sun. cool isn't this cool yeah, yeah. so this is a block of beeswax but it's but, different than we normally see because normally we see more of a golden yeah <clears throat> like when you think about a beeswax candle right exactly so it really depends on the the flower source yep. um so any guesses the flower source of this beeswax it's dark think of honeys that can't look at the back because it's got uh, oh is it buckwheat one. very good guess very good guess you're close okay but not really at all no cigar <laughs> It's a plant? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. What is it? It's Manuka honey. Manuka honey. Beeswax. Oh, there it is. That's the... Manuka be... Oh, it's beautiful. So if you're just watching this, it almost looks like a chocolate. Yeah. Like a chocolate cup. Yeah. It's a deep, dark uh, color. So there we are. Got that yeah. friend. That's very cool. But regardless, I know Manuka gets a lot of like clout and praise and it's an amazing honey. Yeah. And I argue, you know, like all at least wildflower uh, honeys are medicinal. Yep, yeah. definitely. So, Unless okay. they're like super heated, then they lose some of right. their properties. Yeah. You want to get it raw. Totally. Yeah. Um, but it can even stand a lot of heat. And I'll yeah. just give the example of like, think of a beehive in the middle of the field, in the middle of the summer, right? It might be plus 30 yeah. or even 40 in the tropics or yes, you're higher right. certain yeah. parts of the world atmospherically. And then a tightly enclosed space with all these little like buzzing beings that can keep themselves warm in the winter. Yes, Generating that's true. a lot of heat. Yeah. So easily north of 50 degrees centigrade yeah. can handle. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, there's a, but yeah, if we like. Ideally it's best if we heat it up right. in our own. Yeah. A nice gentle. Controlled. Yeah. Double boiler. Yeah. Or, yeah. Situation, but yeah, these are lovely. Yeah, cool. Okay, okay let's so talk about this. One other salve. Um, this one I have been using, and I'm gonna like double up now with also the Arnica pain relief salve. Uh, You've been using this on your yeah, hip. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a pine and spruce pitch salve. Uh, so you know you've probably seen this on conifers, like that mm -hmm. resin. And uh, for those of you at home, like it's uh, it basically it's. You know, whenever I'm doing plant walks, I, I get people. I ask them, I was like, so what, what's going on here? What do you notice? Like, mm -hmm. why why is this showing up? And 100% of the time, it's so clear. Well, 
there's an injury to yep. the tree, right? Like there's a branch broken, there's a gash in it, something like that. And the re it's a part of the immune response of the tree to produce this resin that's antimicrobial and like healing and sealing, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't even want like windborne, you know, viruses or fungi or whatever that could get into the tree beyond its protective layer because that's been compromised. So out comes the sap or the, mm -hmm. the pitch, the resin. Yep seals it up uh so very antimicrobial number one uh but then also you know healing and repairing uh, mm -hmm. in, in that way too when you had you in the foragers forecast recently we had a you talked about the little bumps on the spruce tree oh that's actually on the fir on the fir tree yeah okay little blisters yeah called. yeah 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 in the, in the fir uh is it the same it's it's same but different right okay <laughs> you know that phrase same but different <laughs> same 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 different different, <laughs> different yeah uh for all intents and purposes, yes, it's the same. Yeah. Uh, there's slight differences, but with that tree, especially the Abies balsamifera, like it's quite voluminous, like what yeah. it produces okay. uh, and is known, just even in the name, that balsam, right? If yeah. healing uh, and easy to harvest. Um, and unlike a spruce or a pine where you got to find one that's been damaged, mm -hmm. Uh, these ones, like, yeah, there's little blisters on, on the bark at the surface that you can just, like, pop yep. and uh, collect quite easily. And certain foragers, they'll they'll go out and get, like, you know, a liter in a day, no problem. Is it safe for the tree? It's not damaging yeah. to the tree? It's so it's damaging. sort of like um, tapping a maple tree Yeah, it's kind of like that. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Like, it's there. It's kind of ready at the surface. That's interesting, you know, difference between those conifers that how, yeah, it's got it right on the surface almost ready for whoever's coming by that needs it yeah. maybe right i don't know we did it on our wild plant walk at the herb conference with patrick oh, nice. and david no what was the same anyways yeah <laughs> yeah it was so. a wonderful it was cool i was like oh i had no idea you could do this yeah yeah now furs are a little bit harder to find uh around calgary but if you go to bc there's plenty more yeah there's so many different types of fur and uh yeah but for those that are in in alberta and the foothills you know you find that pitch that resin uh usually kind of in chunks off the tree yeah it reminds me of a candle dripping yeah. kind of wax yeah exactly yeah and so that's what we take and extract into olive oil uh again could be any kind of a fat so this one you can definitely notice the smell the aroma of it um but there's no yeah. other essential oils added like it's just purely it's straight. just that sprucey okay so was there a difference with how because i was i didn't prepare this was there a difference because this is more of a resinous um you know material yeah. rather than uh the other two where we used plant yeah, like, and, like and leaf especially and, like fresh green material. Yeah. Um, so is there a difference with how you would extract that into oil or? Yeah, I would say, well, in the case of like the fresh plant material, like something like even like juicy, like comfrey leaves, yep. as well as the resin, like the double boiler and the heat method. You wouldn't want to like put it directly on heat or mm -hmm. straight in a microwave. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't microwave it. <laughs> uh, but a double boiler allows for that gentle transfer of heat, yep. uh, which you know, over a long period of time, like say several hours, you can allow for a lot of that moisture to come out of the the comfort, evaporate off. But then also, you know, you'd be surprised. Like you drop that in, uh, even though it's like, again, tough, hard, resiny, like frankincense resin, mm -hmm. you know, like in a nice warm oil, uh, a, a lot of it does dissolve. Oh yeah, so, you can smell it. Yeah, it, it does leave a, a bit of, and depending on how fine you clean it, like even this one here, uh, there's a little bit of bark. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, maybe you could spend some time like really cleaning it up before yep. you put it in the oil. But otherwise, um, the resin goes in, you're gonna be left with a bit of residue. Don't do this in a pot that you don't. That you wanna any, reuse. <laughs> have any attachment to yeah and uh yeah the oil just picks it all up okay do you have to leave it for longer than you would leave a plant no just, no. just a few hours like a double boil okay yeah. do you macerate it in the same way like will we put it in and we'll leave it on the shelf for a bit or no. just heat yeah okay just heat. okay yeah well that's cool and this um the smell is obviously there so that tells us that yeah, that yeah. medicine is All getting into it in there for sure and you can use this also for like chest congestion congestion yeah, and totally. things like that as well i mean i don't know if this is true but i like to say this this inspired the vicks vapor rub you know like yes the concept of it anyways, yeah that right? mental yeah. mentholating quality to it 
Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and you could easily mix this with something that had a little bit of peppermint in it. Yeah, totally. Or add wintergreen or something like that and put it on. And it's good when you are using essential oils on the skin, you want to, it's best to dilute them. Yep. So that type of a carrier, you know, the spruce or the pine or fir, whatever you had, uh, it's got its own medicinal properties. You boost it up with a little bit of essential oils, like you say, put it on the chest. Eucalyptus, yeah. Yeah, and it's that kind of decongestant, expectorant, really, really good. These are great to have in the house, mm-hmm. just like yeah, ready, yeah, ready for action. No, totally. And you could, I suppose, leave these in the fridge if you, you could. especially something like the pine. But you don't need to if you're using it regularly. But yeah, maybe if you had it for, right. you know, I'm going to keep it as a Vicks Vapor Rub, for example. Right. It doesn't have preservatives in it. That's right. Yeah, like there would be natural antimicrobials mm-hmm. within the resins or some of the herbs. Yep. Um, yeah. I would say I would give the green garden salve, you know, less of a shelf life than the pine pitch. Yep. But that being said, olive oil, you know, it has to be yes. very antimicrobial to overcompensate for the olive oil. Yes. Because you can't, you know, that yep. will eventually go off. Yes. Kind of thing. Yeah. And we did like, for example, with the arnica, we did put the rosemary in there, which is right. giving it another uh, yeah. antioxidant little protection. But honestly, this green garden sab we have and the uh, pine pitch we have in both sizes, the spruce pine and the green garden. But this small one goes yeah. pretty quick, especially in the winter. Yeah. Because you want to use it because right. it feels so nice. <laughs> yeah. So speaking of use and location, so we've got a jar right by the door, mm-hmm. you know, so again, that's a reminder for our son when he's going out oh nice and then i keep one in my backpack so you find this one helps with skin yeah protection from yeah. The- okay yeah, totally um even if just because it's a source of fat and it's beeswax yes that's true um but you know for all the other benefits you know cuts scrapes but also uh pain relieving like even on like aching muscles yep you know massaging that in yeah Maybe you should bring it to your massage tomorrow. Get him to <laughs> Use this, please. Can you please put this on my... <laughs> yeah. yeah, get my hip sorted out tomorrow. It's good. It's good to take care of yourself. Yeah. Especially this time of year. This is a really a time of year when we want to go inward. We want to rest. We want to relax. But it's really important to go outside yeah. and move your body. Well, and that's the thing. Like, yeah. you know, a lot of people are like, what? You got into snowboarding in your 40s? You know, like, are yeah. you worried? Are you concerned? And like... No, like I, I get it. It's going to happen. It's happened twice now or if like, you know, but in a couple of years and we know so many people who injure themselves slipping on ice right. or, yeah, or cross country skiing. <laughs> <laughs> so, which is an old person sport in some ways. Yeah. And I mean, you can hurt yourself in all kinds of ways, but you've got to live. You got to live. Yeah, I got to live. And, and you're probably building muscular strength yeah. and coordination that's yeah. going to help you in other aspects. Yeah. Not to mention just kind of bonding as a family. It's so good yeah Yeah. especially when you have an older kid you need to hang out with and it's like we need to do something interesting (laughs) yeah and then you got your your first aid at the ready you know bring your first aid with you always yeah that's another thing about arnica though it works best when you use it right away that's true yeah yeah so yeah especially for the bruising right maybe we should do an arnica spruce pine pitch combo oh next year yeah Okay, uh, let us know. Did you enjoy this? How? Uh, any other questions that come up? Um, yeah, share it with those that think it could benefit. And we'll be back next week with uh, some more herbal highlights, some more herbal terms, and uh, just some good fun times. We have fun. Have with this, fun. Right? Yeah. Get outside. <laughs> we have sun. Enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> it might be cold, but yeah, yeah. You live just in... you just shorten it. There's yeah. no no bad weather, only bad clothing. Right there. You go. So bundle up. Yeah. And enjoy. And See you apply, next and time. And apply your, your fat. Yes. Fatten <laughs> up that face. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in. If you've enjoyed today's episode, be sure to give us a like, share this with someone you know who would benefit, and subscribe so you're up to date with all the new episodes coming out. You can shop online at lightseller.ca as well as visit us in the heart of Bonesse in Calgary, Alberta. 